Here's a good one. How do you encourage your students to feel empowered, respectful and confident in the classroom with their peers? That's from Emma. Wow, thanks Emma, that's a wonderful question. I think that probably the first thing that comes to mind is to give them the opportunity to. Uh, I know that's gonna sound strange, but I often think about school as an environment which uh, sometimes, in order to try and maintain a, a positive and a safe learning environment, we put all these um, wise uh, fences and constraints on our students. And I think that sometimes, almost all the time, um, even though sometimes students will do things that uh, you kind of shake your head at and you think, wow, was I ever that silly and naive and immature? And the answer was, yes, we all were. Um, but I often think, you know, we don't give our students enough credit for what they're capable of doing. Um, I think about some of the students at, at my school um, and the incredible acts of um, selflessness and of thinking about the communities around them, um, of you know, ingenuity in trying to serve the people and the needs they see around them in their families and their friends with strangers. Um, I think about recently some of the work that our students did raising funds for um, homeless people all around Sydney. And I think, you know what, what we need to do is to open their eyes to the needs around them and then give them the capacity, let them go, um, help them see they have the opportunity and the power to make that impact rather than saying, no, 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 this is not for you. Big people will solve these problems. Um, so I think enabling them and helping them see where the big problems are so that they can address them, that's probably the key. Thank you. Now, Jerry is asking, what's your favorite subject in maths? Oh, Jerry, that's pretty tough. That's like, which is your favorite child, right? Um, I think <clears throat> I think I have an answer to this, which I always come back to. Um, it's a bit like, uh, you know, different times I feel like different things and I enjoy different things, it's strongly influenced by what I happen to be teaching at the present time. Uh, but if I had to come back to one thing, it's always going to be geometry. Um, I know that sounds a bit strange, it's like, oh, shapes, that sounds a bit boring. Um, but the reason why I love geometry so much is that so many people um, can say, oh, I'm not really into maths, I don't enjoy it, I didn't understand it. But then if you put them in front of a beautiful piece of art, they can't help but have a visceral aesthetic experience saying there is beauty here to admire and marvel at. There was skill that went into the perfect proportioning and symmetry of this artwork that I can't help but enjoy it. And geometry is the heartbeat underneath that. Even if you can't articulate it, you're still experiencing it. And you know, that, that sense of mathematics being underneath everything that we experience around us that we think is beautiful. I made this reference to music and my kids before. Um, someone said once that music is the joy that we feel when we're counting but don't know it. Um, I think that geometry is the perfect example of something that's always hiding beneath the surface but that everyone can appreciate and that's why I love it so much. That's a fantastic answer, Eddie. Thank you. We're nearly out of time. There's a couple of questions I didn't get to and I do apologize about that, but I really wanted to finish on this note. Eddie, if you were to give us three takeaways on kindness, suggestions, inspirational quotes, books, give us three takeaways before we bring this wonderful conversation to a close. Jane, I will do my best <laughs> and I want to say thank you as well to everyone who asked questions. They were delightful. Um, I guess, where would I start? Um, okay, number one, to encourage uh, everyone who's here watching and listening, I think I'd say first people, people care. Um, I know that seems like a, a bit of a truism, um, but for me, maybe a story I could tell would really help us understand the, um, help me communicate and convey the importance of this. Um, I, I mentioned before that in the last years of high school for me, my mum was quite sick. But one of the things she was very um, emphatic about was that she did not want um, anyone who didn't have to know, she didn't want them to be aware of what she was going through. And I think she, she didn't want pity, uh, and she was quite a private person as well. And so as a consequence, none of my friends had any idea what was going on. They didn't know why often I would fall asleep in class. It was because I was up all night the previous evening, you know, changing my mom's oxygen tank or something like that. Um, they didn't know why sometimes I'd be at school in the morning and then after lunch I'd just disappear because when she was in 
palliative care, um, there were a few really touch and go moments where, you know, my brother and sister and I were all basically told, drop everything, this could be it, you want to be there if this is the last moment that you have. My, my friends didn't know any of that. And so for the vast majority of them, the first any of them knew that this happened was when uh, they found out about the funeral and were told that they could come. And I still remember the experience of standing there surrounded by my friends, friends who had actually progressively been sort of, uh, you know, becoming more and more remote from because I, I couldn't share so much of my life to them because it was what my family wanted. Um, but to know that they were there in that moment supporting me, they cared so deeply about something that I thought they would say, oh, we don't have time for that. People care much more often than we realize. So that's the first thing I hope encourages people. Um, the second thing is maybe to think about the simple things that we often get distracted from in the busyness of life. Uh, we're coming to the end of school holidays at the moment and all my friends who are not teachers, they always love to joke about school holidays. Uh, just so anyone knows, I've just been recently uh, working on the year 12 major works in mathematics that my class has put together and reading the, all these essays and watching videos they've created. A lot of fun, but also hard work. Um, the thing that I think about uh, at those times, and everyone's got their version of this, is that when we're busy, we often get so distracted from the simple things that bring joy to us. And so I've had a few moments recently where, you know, the weather has had some beautiful times and in lockdown, it's been all the more important to get out with the kids. I'm very fortunate. I live in a part of Sydney where there is um, abundant bushland that has been well protected and it's just gorgeous to go there and enjoy the sights and the sounds and the smells of nature. So I think we all need to slow down a little bit and remember those simple things. Um, and you asked for three things. So the third and last one is uh, thinking about possibilities. And what I mean by that is, I mean, you mentioned before last week, you got to speak to Grace Tame, what an incredible woman she is, incredible human being. Uh, one of the very um, sharp experiences that I, I can never forget um, from being part of the Australian of the Year Awards a few years ago was that when myself and 31 other people sort of all collected in Canberra um, for the national announcement of who the Australians of the Year would be, I remember going there and thinking, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe um, that this is something I get to take part in. I was not thinking at all about being a, the recipient of the Australian's Local Hero Award. It was just so beyond the pale of what I thought was possible. I was just focused on these incredible individuals that I got to meet and spend time with and be inspired by. And the thing that really shocked me and has stuck with me ever since is that to an individual, every single person I spoke to as we spent those few days together said almost exactly the same thing. They said, I can't believe I'm here. I am just an ordinary person. I'm just doing, I'm just doing my job or I did what anyone would have done under the same circumstances, given the same opportunity I had. And it sort of dawned on me we are all ordinary people, but ordinary people nonetheless are capable of extraordinary things. And so I guess to inspire everyone who's watching right now to think about the possibilities, um, you may feel like a very ordinary person and so do I, and that's because we are, but human beings are all capable of incredible things. It's why I love working with students uh, all the time. Every time I meet one, I think, wow, what are you capable of? What are you going to achieve? Um, and how are you going to serve your community and flourish in it? Uh, the possibilities, they're endless. So I hope that's something which um, I thought that inspires people tonight. Wow, those are three fantastic takeaways, Eddie. And we'll be sure to put those up on our social media channels. This chat will be up on the Stay Kind YouTube channel, and I hope you'll share it as well, which I, I hope you will, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And ladies and gents and girls and boys who've joined this conversation, it's been such a delight for, for Eddie and me. And don't forget we've got another uh, Kind July conversation next week with Catherine Wolfgram, who's a wonderful transgender advocate. I hope you'll join us then. And really, Eddie, I just want to say thank you so much for giving us your time and your wonderful experiences and words on the subject of kindness. And we wish you all the best for going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Jane. I really appreciate it and hope everyone had a great evening. Bye.